Okay, cool. How's it going, guys? Uh, let's see. Audio looks good. Um, I think we are good to go. How's it going, everyone? Hopefully everyone's having a good good early morning, or maybe it's not early for you. It's definitely early for me here uh, where I'm at, uh, but that is totally fine. Um, so for those of you who don't know, my name is Jared Chavez. Um, I am a senior character artist in the game industry, and I like to make creatures and monsters and uh, people and different things like that. Um, on this stream in particular, I have been working on doing some animal anatomy over the past couple of stream sessions, and that's kind of where we're at with this model right now. Um, we're going to keep that kind of rolling for for now for a little bit um where we made a decent amount of impact on on the head that i'm doing for this dog but obviously there's still ways to go on it um last time we made some progress i think that this was where we were at last time yeah so made some changes uh i in one of the streams i had actually changed the uh the breed of dog that we are doing to a Belgian Malinois. And that's what we're kind of focused on right now, getting the head to look good, um, you know, and just kind of trying to refine some of the forms and shapes of the head and, you know, practice some of the anatomy and things like that. So that's what we're gonna keep doing today. Um, for those of you who are new and who have never been to uh, one of my streams, the, the way that I usually like to focus it is, you know, obviously just me kind of hanging out and sculpting and stuff, but I, um, I really like to take questions, you know, um, I like to offer some insight and things like that into, um, you know, the game industry or art or, you know, my process and workflow. So I always encourage people to definitely ask questions if you're curious about things, whatever they are, you know, it could be as simple as like, what uh what do i use to texture or you know things like that totally fine um but i feel like the more questions that kind of come in the easier things are to you know keep rolling and stuff and, and we can have good conversation and things like that off of it so um yeah if you guys have any questions anything like that please feel free to throw them in the chat and we can talk about them but if not we can oops uh, we can just hang out, sculpt this for a little while, and see where it goes. Um, I do know that last stream, unfortunately, I had like a really, really bad uh, internet connection for some reason. I don't, I don't entirely know what happened. Um, but we've been streaming for a while, and then all of a sudden my internet kicked. I think it was the YouTube stream, so hopefully that doesn't happen today. Um, but if things do happen and get weird and by chance, uh, that does happen again, I would just say maybe make your way over to Twitch and you can continue watching there, um, if that does occur, but hopefully it doesn't, hopefully my, my internet holds up a little bit better than it did last time. So what I kind of wanted to tackle right now is, uh, just kind of refining some of the forms of what's in the ear um, getting some of these like big kind of shapes in here i always uh which i feel like this isn't necessarily the case with like animals or creatures because um i feel like it's kind of hard to neglect them but when it comes to people i feel like that's usually one like thing that i really notice in people's sculpts when they get I guess when they get lazy is when they neglect the ears and they kind of just use like a stock ear and they actually don't come in and refine it. That's one of those, uh, one of those aspects of a model that, you know, shouldn't be neglected. It always kind of stands out like a sore thumb to me. I think that that's like first thing I look at when I do interviews and stuff too, is like, did they sculpt those ears?
Okay, so you'll notice right now, um, one of the areas that, so in the last stream, actually, I was having some issues kind of getting this sort of profile to look right. Like right now, you can see it's kind of just like a rounded shape. There isn't really much uh, going on in terms of like breaking that silhouette. So I still am kind of trying to solve that part of the um, of the profile. Um, I feel like some of the other areas are coming together. I feel like the the snout's looking pretty decent. Um, some of the other forms are looking nice. I definitely need to like kind of just soften and, and maneuver everything together. Um, but we're, you know, we're making progress in the right direction, but there's definitely still a ways to go, that is for sure. Uh, first time catching you live. Hope you're well. I am. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm glad you could make it. Yeah, I uh, I usually stream on this channel like once every um, two weeks or so is kind of what I try to do. Uh, sometimes it doesn't doesn't necessarily pan out that way, but I try to get on the channel at least twice a week. Try to. Or not twice a week, sorry every two weeks or so. So yeah, I know that I have another stream. Um, a, I think it's like towards the end of the month, maybe like the last Friday before the end of the month or something. I want to say it actually might be next Friday. I don't remember. I need to double check on that. But um, yeah, definitely check that out if you guys are interested. Um, also, I do stream on my own personal channels as well. Um, I have a YouTube channel for anyone that's interested, and we kind of do some more of this work on there as well. Um, let's see. I can actually show that too real quick. Uh, let's see. For people that are interested in it. Um, I've really been in a kick for doing heads. And so this is the piece we're working on over there. It's a little bit farther along, but you know, it's a fun piece. Um, you know, dinosaurs, who doesn't like those? Or, you know, everyone likes those. So, um, yeah. Uh, hey, Jared, will you join Sculpt Off this year? Any tips for the challenge? Um, no, I unfortunately will not. Um, so two things. One, I'm actually going to be out of town when ZBrush Summit is going on, uh, which is unfortunate because I would have liked to have gone to that. Um, but I had planned a trip before I knew the dates for it. So I'm not going to be in town to make it for that. Um, and two, I'm also not super good at sculpting fast, which if you've ever come to any of the streams, you'll know. Um, Cause like what the sculpt off, I think you get three hours. I think <laughs> if it was me like sculpting three hours, I would end up with something that like looks like this, like that's all you'd get from me. Um, I have a tendency of working really slow when it comes to, to sculpting. Cause I'm kind of a little bit neurotic about things. Um, and overall I'm just kind of slow. So I am not participating in it. I think it'd be cool, but you know, I feel like I would just get embarrassed because of how fast everyone else sculpts, you know. Um, but I'm also not sure who the participants are. Obviously, that doesn't, like, deter me by any means. But um, I'm not sure who the, the participants are this year. But I, unfortunately, am not one of them. Maybe at some point in my career when I feel like I'm fast enough. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm not, um, which I will say for anyone who is like local or able to go to Z the ZBrush Summit, I definitely would recommend it. Um, it's a cool experience, great opportunity to meet people. You know, there's a lot of people that uh, will be there probably from the ZBrush live streams and things like that, um, as well as like some of the the people that work in the industry and things, you know, so it's it's a great opportunity to meet people and and watch some demos and things like that. And also the, I think it's at Noman still, but Noman's, Noman's campus is, is a cool little place to check out, you know? So yeah, definitely check it out. Uh, if you're, if you're local, even if you're not and get the opportunity to, and you know, you have the ability to come out for it. I think it's a good, it's a good way to kind of come and, um, meet some people. So any of those uh, 
things are, you know, like Lightbox. Lightbox is right around the corner. That's another great one. That one I will be at. Um, that one's in October. So if uh, anyone is coming to that, I will be there. And, you know, always interested in meeting new people. So let's, see, let's tuck some of this stuff in. Um, let's see. Uh, do you have courses? Um, I do. I do have courses. Uh, I have a couple of different things that I offer. So like I said, I have a YouTube channel. That's kind of like my biggest platform where I provide stuff. And obviously all those things are free. Um, so on there I have like small tutorials and making, making of videos um for a lot of my characters that i've made over the past year i started the the channel like last year um a little bit over a year ago and i've been working on that since so and and it's i continue to kind of put content out there uh with the projects that i'm doing in my uh my personal work um and so that's kind of the the biggest easiest platform to find stuff um i also do have some tutorials on uh, my art station store, which you can find on my art station, uh, portfolio. So if you just search Jared Chavez, um, you'll, you'll be able to find me there. Um, and there, there's a couple, there's like a couple of things that I offer in that store. And then as far as like full length character courses, um, there's two things that I have do slash am doing. One of them is last year I did an art station learning course. So that I like developed a full character for. Um, so check that out. That one has, you know, a lot of hopefully useful information in there. Um, you can kind of see like my, my uh, process and workflow on that. Um, and then the other one, which is still kind of an ongoing thing is, is I am an instructor at CGMA currently, and I teach a texturing for games course there. Um, which if, if you know anything about my stuff, I guess at this point is I kind of become the, uh, a texturing instructor. Um, and I, I don't know if that was necessarily intentional, but, um, a lot of, um, Excuse me for one sec, sorry. Um, a lot of that kind of stemmed from the fact that uh, I started doing a texturing video on my um, YouTube channel. And then after that, I think I kind of just became someone that was a little bit synonymous with uh, texturing and CGMA was like, Hey, do you want to teach a texturing course? And I was like, yeah, sure. So now that's kind of like one of my bigger things that I teach on the channel, on my channels. And, um, and also what I teach at CGMA. So, yeah. So those are the offerings that I have currently. Um, you know, I, one of the big ones that I commonly get is, uh, do I do mentor mentorships? I don't know why I put like such a focus on mentor there, um, mentorships. And unfortunately at this point, I don't, uh, just because I don't have the time between doing all the streaming that I'm trying to do, putting together like edits for the YouTube videos that I try to do. Um, you know, uh, having a, a family and, um, also like working a full-time job. So unfortunately right now, mentorships aren't, aren't uh, something that I offer, but I have gotten a lot of uh, curiosity about it. So it's something that I would like to do in the future. I just probably need to kind of like explore a little bit more on that, um, that subject before I, before I dive right into it, you know? So that is kind of what I have to offer at this junction in time but hopefully you can find some stuff there that's that's useful um like i said the the nice thing is is zbrush was like hey would you be interested in doing stuff on the channel which i was like yes i would love that because um before i really became this eye is really not great i need to kind of fix 
um, some of these planes and things like that. Let's find a better picture. Um, let's see, how is that working? Okay, I think I need to tuck this eye back just a little bit. Um, but yeah, originally, so like texturing was always uh, kind of one of those things that I, I actually felt like I was never very good at. I kind of felt like I struggled with. I took a class for it and I learned a lot, um, but I, I definitely felt like I wasn't great at it. And I always have liked ZBrush and, you know, sculpting has always been kind of like my favorite thing and it still is. And so when uh, ZBrush was like, hey, do you want to come sculpt on the channel? I was like, yes, that would be a great opportunity for me to just make like sculpting content, you know, and that is how we are here today. So. So yeah, figuring out this like interaction between the skull and the eye is giving me a little bit of fits. Because like from this angle, I'm getting just some kind of weird, weird shaping that I'm not too happy with. And I think part of it is because I'm like have this eyelid a little bit too big. So yeah. Tucking this around the eye a little bit. Uh, let's see. Um, do you mainly only do creatures, or do you have characters slash humanoids? I do. Uh, I do both. Um, so. If you check out my portfolio, um, so currently right now I'm a character artist at Firewalk Studios, uh, but before that I was at Turtle Rock Studios and there we worked, I, that's where I um, started in the industry. And while I was there, I worked on uh, Back for Blood. So while I was there, I did some of the survivors, I did zombies, I did like the special infected. So I kind of have a range of what I like to do. Um, I will say prior to being at Turtle Rock, I was very much just like a person, humanoid kind of artist. Um, and there, there was a, a reason for that. It wasn't necessarily because I was like, oh, this is what I love the most. I think it, I, I liked it, but also I was kind of a little bit like uncomfortable doing um creatures and monsters and things like that because i feel like uh i didn't have the creative muscles to kind of like flex that uh skill set um okay i feel like that's looking a little bit better still maybe this area is too big um but I, I felt like I had a hard time, like, kind of flexing that creative muscle. But then when I was at Turtle Rock, they were like, hey, you're going to make this big monster. And I was like, okay. And so I kind of had to figure it out. Um, and that was where I, like, really kind of became more more comfortable doing uh, creatures and monsters um, during that job. And so now I, I really just like to do creatures and monsters in my free time. Um, so you'll, like, like I showed a little bit earlier... Uh, the, this this one no this one yeah so like dinosaurs monsters animals creatures so this is like the stuff that i kind of do on my personal channel um and also you know i've been doing a pokemon series uh based off of like concepts by stephen oakley which he is a like creature concept artist that works at santa monica studios and i really love his work and so like he kind of always makes really cool creatures and monsters that I, I want to create. So um, he's kind of like the well that I can constantly tap into for that, that sort of concept art fix, you know? I feel like for me, it's always been hard to find a, a concept artist that I really like that makes cool creatures. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of what I like to do more in my personal work. But in my professional career, I have done both of them um but creatures was definitely not intentional so
Uh, can you briefly explain about the pipeline in the game industry or from your experience? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, so the pipeline, it definitely varies from studio to studio. Your pipeline as a character artist uh, will will pretty much always be the same. So I'll, I'll start there. So from for a character artist, what your pipeline usually looks like is you come after concept. So concept will hand you a design. Um, once concept hands you a design, there's usually a couple of things that can happen. If the studio is more organized and, you know, um, trying to ensure a good character and product, what they'll do is they'll do what's called a block out. So you'll essentially take the concept, you'll get like the really simple broad shapes and forms, and um, you'll make a model off of that. And once you have that model, you'll hand that off to like rigging and animation and design, and they'll take that and they'll kind of do testing with it. Uh, so it's very simple. It's just like, you know, kind of like a really crass representation of of the final character like i would equate it to like if you look on like my con my uh ref board something like this where it's like just basic geometric shapes or you know um like rough sketched out stuff it's not like detailed nothing like that and so the whole point of that is to hand that off to those departments so that design can make sure that it's fitting their needs and animation can start to play with it to ensure that you know if there's areas of concern with animation so like for example say a character has like um a jacket or like things that are like on his their mid waist area where they may be crouching and like ducking and running. You want to make sure that you aren't creating possible um, like clipping or issues that are going to arise from collision of dynamic objects and things like that. And so you're you're just kind of trying to troubleshoot those issues um, and make sure that you aren't going to run into any problems down the line. And and you. What's the biggest kind of aspect of being a character artist in the game industry is, yes, making your character, but also making a character and being aware of a, how your character adheres to those other departments. Um, and usually design is a big one that I think a lot of people don't necessarily recognize, is there will be things that will change about your character because it doesn't meet a design need for... Um, for the game. So usually that's kind of like the starting process of um, making a character is getting like a block out and testing it to make sure that it works in game and works with what the project needs. And then from there, usually you'll kind of get into a point where you start to lock things down in terms of, you know, um, what the character looks like and, and there'll be some iteration back and forth and things like that. Um, but once you get to that point, it usually comes down to resolving those issues, making sure that everything looks and feels right. And then once design and animation are happy with it and there's like a final concept, then it's kind of off to the races uh, for character art. And we start making the high poly. So you do all the sculpting and all that stuff, get all the models together um, and make your character and in, in zbrush or you know if maybe you use something other than zbrush but it's probably zbrush uh i don't really know anyone else that makes any high polys like you can make a couple of high polys in maya but you're not gonna like make the face sculpt or anything like that in in maya um and then once you have the high poly you'll probably jump over to something like maya again for um, a low poly mesh so you'll do all your retopology in there and then you'll also create your uvs and then once you have that you have a low poly model that can be handed off again to animation and they can start taking that low poly and rigging it it'll have its uvs so they 
there might be some back and forth between you know different departments and things like that uh if if issues arise but um you'll hand it off to them so that they can start getting the the model on a rig while that's going on you'll start texturing it and look developing it and usually around that time you you know hair and textures kind of work together simultaneously so eye texture and substance painter um, which is kind of more of what is used widely at this point um and you know you do your textures you'll get your stuff set up in engine and then all while that's happening animation will be setting it up for rig or not animation uh the rigging department will be setting it up for animation and animation will take it from there and then that's kind of the overall sort of cycle and process as a character artist um you know there's some other steps and things that will come into play uh but broad strokes that's kind of what you end up doing on a on a day-to-day -day basis is um making characters making block outs uh solving problems so yeah definitely have to get used to to problem solving as a as a character artist um troubleshooting things figuring out how to meet different needs for different departments it kind of sounds a little bit intimidating but it's it i mean i've never run into too many issues but there are definitely challenges that come up with characters that you know you may not think of and um are never really sure how to figure out or what's going to be the best solution to accommodate different departments and so usually you'll work together with with your team and um, with those departments to make sure that you kind of get across what needs to get across so so yeah hopefully that was that was insightful um you know i think uh before i started in the industry i didn't really know um or think about those ideas that like oh you kind of have to like work cross discipline with some of the departments you know especially design because i think uh you know, I, I would never have had a reason to have been experienced to that or would have never have had a reason to have that experience when I'm just like making my own personal work. But that is definitely probably one of the biggest departments uh, aside from animation that you kind of have to adhere to as a character artist. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of it's kind of how things go go in. Uh, in development. So, I feel like I need to like take a step back from these eyes because they are just, they are not wrapping the way that I want them to. Maybe this is why. That will help a little bit so that this kind of starts to wrap around the skull just a little bit more around the eye and into the skull um where was the dog pure ref uh image from uh that was for oh shoot i get this question all the time about animal anatomy books let me see if i can find it real quick um, there is an animal anatomy book and I have a copy of it, uh, but I always end up forgetting the name of it. And it is literally the last thing that I searched. It is called an Atlas of animal anatomy for artists. So this is what it looks like. Um, it's a great book. You can find it on Amazon for relatively cheap. So I definitely would check that out if you're interested in like finding those images. You can find them online too. Um, there's like these, this this is ultimately the images that kind of come in the, uh, the book. This one is a layover of, this one is like something that I made as like a, like a block out 
kind of how to break down some of the shapes and things like that. Um, so that's not in there, but you know, these are, so they're really useful images and, uh, uh, I definitely would recommend it if you're looking into um, animal anatomy. Super useful. So, okay, let's see. I feel like this is getting a little bit too wobbly and not very clear what's going on through here. You know, sometimes after you've been sculpting on something for a while, I feel like you get into a point where you're like, am I actually making this better? Am I just making this worse? Because like right now, I definitely have had that feeling, especially with like when we were here, I feel like it looked good. You know, there's some like nice stylization to the to the face and the bone structure and things like that, but it wasn't really selling the breed. So let's see if we can pull some of that stuff back. Yeah, I feel like those eyes are still not great on that one either, but okay. Um and this is why reference is key. It's because you can't make this stuff up. Let's kind of smooth some of this stuff out and refine it here. I know I originally had started with the intent of like sculpting in the ears, but I knew that I needed to fix those eyes a little bit more. Anyone in here working on anything, anything cool or interesting, any personal projects? I know that uh, right now there is a, um, what's it called, uh, art station challenge going on, which if you haven't seen or aren't participating in, I definitely would recommend, you know, I think those are great, uh, great ways to to make a new piece um for those who aren't who haven't followed uh me on my channel or anything like that um that is actually how i ended up getting a job in the game industry so you know if you're trying to break in i definitely would recommend it um it's it's a great way to kind of get your stuff seen and also interact with people that are in the industry and and things like that so And get a lot of feedback from people and um, I feel like it's a it's a great way to kind of like deliver a fun concept you know but also kind of keep you to a schedule and um, and a timeline you know which is what you have to do in in games you got your schedule and timeline and things like that so it's a good way to kind of get that that uh, practice you know I know that the I think the um the uh theme is neon Tokyo maybe which is definitely a cool theme I I if I had the time I definitely would do that kind of theme um the past couple of themes definitely haven't really resonated with me I think the last one that caught my eye was like feudal Japan maybe but I uh I had just started at Turtle Rock at that time, so I don't think I had the bandwidth really to do a full character, which unfortunately at this point I I don't have the bandwidth to like 
make a full character in the timeline that they have the contest. Um, I would love to, but just don't have the time for that. Um, let's see. Uh, hey, Jared, I'm currently a university student and I graduate next year. Do you have any recommend or do you have any recommended practices or exercises when studying anatomy? Um, yes, I well, I don't know if I would necessarily say it's a I, okay, okay, so there's two things that I'll say. One, I would recommend um, crap, Anatomy for Sculptors. It's a great book. Um, I have it somewhere in my room. And it's a great way to kind of look at, they, they do a great job of presenting anatomy, excuse me, anatomy and um, characters in like a very simplistic light and breaking them down to kind of like primary and secondary forms. And that's kind of what I would recommend is taking individual parts of the body. So like whether it be the bicep, like the arm, for example, and I would study the muscles that make up the arm. But not only would I study the muscles, because I think that that's uh, what a lot of artists' big issues are, is that they study just the muscles, which the muscles are important, but the muscles aren't necessarily the only thing that you need to know when you know anatomy. You need to know bony landmarks. So like, for example, here's the bony landmark. What these bony landmarks indicate to me are points of attachment or insertion. So like here, you have a group of muscles that all attach to this, this bony landmark right here on your elbow. And same thing with the opposite side. So you, when you, where you know where all those points are, it's like you can essentially start to draw the muscles to where they're attaching to. So I would definitely learn those things. Um, I would recommend practicing those things. So practicing what the muscles are, where they are, where they attach to, and where they insert at. So like, for example, here in the chest, you have your pec, which ultimately dives underneath your deltoid and attaches to your, um, See, and here's the thing is I'm not great at muscle names or bone names, but it attaches into your arm. So it doesn't like attach over here in your shoulder, but understanding where muscles actually attach to and kind of how they overlay on top of each other, I would practice those things. And what that might look like is starting from the ground up. So sculpting the skeleton, so sculpting like the bones of the, the arm or whatever, and then taking some dynamesh spheres and drawing or, or sculpting out each muscle. Um, and, and it doesn't, I wouldn't say you have to do necessarily like the, the, the muscles that are like a deep, you can do surface muscles, um, but like kind of map those out and, you know, make sort of an equiche model is probably a good exercise to kind of get familiar with. Um, but in terms of anatomy, like I said, I definitely recommend, um, really making sure you do a good job in in understanding your bony landmarks and your insertions because so i think that that is what most uh most artists end up missing is the insertions and bony landmarks oops um and so then they end up kind of like with a like balloon man sort of look and feel to their anatomy so And I always get this like, oh, how much do you have to like measure or master, not measure, how much do you have to like master anatomy um, as a character artist? I know where muscles are and what they attach to, but I don't like, you know, know um, the name of every single muscle. I can for the most part like look at the human anatomy and i know where like the big masses that inform like the information that i need to know and that's usually really kind of what i think you need to know some people go way deeper than that you know um at, what's his name uh shoot i'm forgetting his name but there are artists that do lessons on anatomy uh christian bull is a teacher at cgma I think he's still the teacher for their anatomy class, but he teaches anatomy there and he's who I learned from, which I definitely would recommend his class if you uh, are interested in that.
he uh, he does a really good job of kind of like breaking down the anatomy. And he's one of those people where like he knows what every muscle and, you know, bone and all that kind of stuff. Like, I'm pretty sure he knows what majority of that stuff is is called. So, um, yeah, definitely would recommend that. Um, do that for like most of the muscle groups and then start to kind of like put it together and as a whole. And that's kind of what I would do to practice um, or take a class. I think taking a class is also a great way to learn. Um, I know Proco has some good good material too. I've, I've definitely learned a lot from his channel when it comes to, uh, anatomy. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's a lot of options, but that's kind of what I would recommend if you're trying to like study it. And the, you know, and this is another thing when it comes to anatomy is if you're sculpting anatomy, understanding what's going on is a lot more important than um than just like sculpting what you're seeing which i think as artists you know that's a lot of what we're kind of taught is like recreate what you see but the more that you understand about it the better that you will uh be able to recreate what you're trying to recreate so like right now if i was smart I would probably try and find like anatomical images of a dog's ear, but I am not smart because I did not prepare uh, ahead of time to get these images. So now because of that, I'm having to kind of wing what I see based on different images that are not exactly the most oriented towards ear anatomy for a dog, but that is okay. Real crazy images coming up for this. If only my dog would like stay still and let me just like look her, look at her and kind of use her as a reference, that would be great. But my dog doesn't want to stay still and want me to do that to her. Um, currently working on an Akuma sculpt. That's cool. That is cool. Currently attempting to make a bust of the White Queen Anne Hathaway from Alice in Wonderland. Also very cool. Very cool. Ooh, okay, this one's gross, but this one will provide some information. And that looks real nasty once it gets subdivided. Um... Do you still do uh, a lot of personal projects? Uh, yes. I love to work on my own personal work on the outside of work, um, which surprising thing is I think I'm kind of in the minority with that. Um, I think that there's a lot of people that, you know, once they do their characters, they're, they're good. They don't want to keep working on personal work, which I understand, you know, you don't want to spend like your whole life at a uh desk but for me i i don't know 
I kind of have gotten to the point in my life where it's like, I like making things more than I do, like just sitting around and playing video games. Um, so like, this is more of kind of that pastime than like how video games used to be when I was in, in high school and college. Um, so I do do a lot of personal work. Also, it's kind of turned into a multi prong sort of thing where it's like, I make personal projects outside of work. Cause I also am like doing YouTube stuff now. Um, and so like, it's a way for me to kind of tackle doing a YouTube video plus making my own personal work. Um, and it kind of incentivizes that, you know, like I get a little bit of a reward from putting stuff on YouTube and, you know, it's, it's helpful to people. And, um, but I also, then I finish a character. And so it's like, it's kind of like that, that constant reward loop of like doing something that, um, kind of fulfills that same sort of feeling that playing video games did, you know, but I feel like I walk away with a little bit more, uh, actually done because of it because like i'm actually making something whereas like you know uh, when i play video games i i can get kind of bored and like i'm like am i actually like doing anything or am i just like wasting my time and i'm i kind of just i don't know i like to i like to do things um i like to get things done and sometimes video games makes that a little bit harder so um, that is kind of where I'm at right now. And that's why I like to do personal work on the side, but, uh, I try to do personal work, um, most days of the week. Um, I don't always have time, but, uh, usually what I like to do to, to, I, I get that question a lot is like, oh, well, how do you make time? How do you schedule yourself? And I think it's like anything, you just kind of have to follow a, schedule and you don't have to like dedicate eight hours a day to making a character but like for me i don't mind waking up at 5 45 6 o'clock and like working on stuff for like an hour you know it's a good opportunity for me to kind of just sit and work on my own work and you know um not be distracted and so i used to do that for a really long time where like i would wake up before uh, before my wife and I would come into the office and I would just like sculpt on my own personal work for, um, an hour, two hours before work. And then, um, we'd kind of like start our day. We'd go to the gym, we would, you know, work out and do that thing. And so it's like, I kind of like had that in my routine, which is definitely what I recommend for most people is, is kind of getting a routine and sticking to that routine. Uh, for me now, my routine is more like I sculpt or I work on stuff before work. So like the first hour before work, I usually like try to sit down and um, knock out my own, my own personal stuff for a little while. And sometimes I'll do it even like for that, for an hour after work, but kind of just depends, you know? Um, so that's sort of like my routine and, and how I allot myself the time to do it. Uh, but that's definitely what I recommend, um, making yourself a schedule and makes things a lot easier to just sit down. And even if it's like 30 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day for five days a week, that's two and a half hours, right? That's my math, right? My math. I think my math is mathing there. Um, so two and a half hours during the week, it's like, you know, before you know it, you can, um, knock out, you can knock out a character in maybe like two months which seems like a long time, but obviously like if you, uh, have that as like a continued schedule, say you knock out a character every like two months at that pace, you would have what six characters by the end of the year. So, I mean, if, if you follow a schedule, you can definitely, um, definitely do a lot with it and yeah, get yourself in a routine. It's what works for me. Um, what's up dog? Yes, what is a dog? Um, sorry, I know that that was probably posted a long time ago. Uh, Flip Normals just came out with a new anatomy lessons. Uh, I've heard good things. Yeah, I have seen that. Um, I don't know much about it, but I would check that out. Also, I would check out uh, Raf Grissetti's anatomy um, video. I'm sure that that probably is also very good. I haven't checked that one out, but that's one that I always see pop up and I'm like, oh, I should, I should watch that and see, you know, 
see what I can find out about it, um, see how it how it is. Here's feeling a little bit better. Got some more stuff going on in there. Let's do this. I feel like this is a little bit too low. Sorry, got distracted there. Um, let's see, your art test course on ArtStation Learning was very helpful and informative for me. Thank you so very much. Question I had was, uh, if you are usually expected to complete the hair cards along with the rest of the character within the two weeks. Uh, in my experience, yes. Um, which usually, or what, from my experience, uh, the hair wasn't like overly complicated. Um, but yeah. You, you, there's more than likely times where you'll be given an art test and you will be expected to, uh, make hair cards along with that. So, which is unfortunate. There are some art tests, like I'm, I'm sure if you go on to like ArtStation, for example, um, and search art tests, you can see some, some, um, different art tests that people have like posted to their portfolio and things like that and get kind of an idea of what uh, some studios art tests look like like um, I've seen like the bungee one before but that one's like really old uh, but it, I think it's like you're like texturing a helmet in the head so there's there's different ones I've I've seen um, so I, it definitely can depend, but I have bit taken an art test before where you had to do the uh, the hair and as well as the um, the modeling and texturing and stuff. So. Which I will say that is it's it's definitely not easy. Um, unfortunately that is kind of sometimes what happens. Uh, do you have any tips to create models with a blend of organic and metal? Uh, it's not like person wearing armor, but more like flesh and metal becoming one object. Um, yeah, usually what I do in situations like that, like, uh, let's see, I actually have a prime example of that. Um, let's see. So if you go to my art station uh that's kind of like what i did on back for blood um so like this this piece was like a fusion of like metal bits and uh monstrosity which this one isn't like quite as crazy but like you can see on the back like the the whole back is like scaffolding and stuff like that um and the arms has like fused in metal bits and things like that um let's see i don't yeah, you can kind of see it here. Um, but yeah, usually what I what I would recommend doing is just making them as two separate objects and then like sculpt over them to to make them kind of feel like they're interacting with each other. Um, that's really all I do. So it's nothing too crazy. You can see like the separation between the two pieces up here and you can see like some of it, like the, the metal eye beams and um, things that are in here. I, yeah, I just sculpt, sculpt them together. That's kind of what I would recommend. Um, that's how I go about things like that. Um, yeah, I think that's probably like the best example. 
yeah, you can kind of see it some more back here. But like this whole creature was meant to be like an amalgamation of, of scaffolding and um, things like that. So. Um, morning, man. Glad I made it to the stream. Happy Friday. Hey, thanks, Logan. Glad you can make it, man. Thanks for stopping by. Um, speaking of hair cards, what's your normal workflow for that? Do you use something like Fiber Shop and GS Curve Tools to place your cards? Um, I do. That is that is what I use. Um, I will say that I hate hair cards, so. Uh, if you ever watch like any of my personal work, I tend not to do things with hair. And if there are things with hair, I will just do um, like an X-Gen groom instead because it looks nicer and it's not as much of a pain in the butt to make. Um, so that is kind of like my, my general sort of workflow, though, is using uh, Fiber Shop to make the cards. And then I'll use GS Curve Tools to place them. So... That's, that is what I do for my work. See, and I think, you know, I had mentioned a little while ago, like, it takes me a long time to make characters. I think that this is why is because I never just focus on one area and get it done. It's like, kind of constantly jump all over. And I end up really distracted with like, different things that I try to solve, which it is a problem. But you know, it, it's worked for me up to this point. But I definitely wish I was a little bit of a faster uh, sculptor than I am. But Oh, well, and that, you know, and also someone had mentioned about like, um, if I do creatures and things like that, that is why creatures is so much more fun than real things is because like, to a certain extent, you can start to invent forms. Obviously, there is like the fact that like, I ground my uh, creatures in reality. Um, but you can make a lot of like the form up to some extent and that is what's really really nice about that whereas like with a dog if something looks wrong it's because it probably is you know so i really need to probably remesh this guy again I feel like the primary forms are almost there. Still some areas that need um, some help, but uh, thank you. Your works are amazing. Well, I appreciate that. That that means a lot. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. Um, I will say that that means a lot. It's about eight o'clock. So we've been going for about an hour. Um, 
we'll probably go for a little bit longer. I'm not sure how much longer we'll stream today, but we'll keep going for a little bit, see if we can kind of resolve some more of these forms. I feel like, you know, it's been some good momentum today, so we can keep things keep things turning. Um, let's see, who are some of your favorite creature artists in the industry? Uh, that's a good question. So I think, um, Let's see who is there. I mean, Stephen Oakley. He's a he's a creature concept artist, um, which I've I've mentioned before. Um, he he I is someone that I just love his work. Um, uh, Geo Nackpill. Um, I really he does human, but he also does a lot of like creatures and things like that. And I just yeah, I really like his work as well. Um, I really love Geo's form work. Uh, he is like incredible at his work with form. And so like, he's someone that I definitely reference a lot when, uh, when looking at primary and secondary forms and just trying to simplify them and make them readable and using that kind of like form hierarchy and structure to my sculpts to, to not make things messy and muddy, um, who else is there? Um, I don't know. That's hard. I, I always feel like when someone asks uh, who who I like for these questions, I don't do a very good job at answering because I kind of like forget people's names on the spot, you know? Um, who else is there? I'm sure that I have a bunch of artists. Let me see if I can find any that I can remember. I have like a collection on um, on ArtStation where like I store references and things like that, and that's where I'm gonna take a look. Oh, Andrew um, Ariza is is I, I love Andrew's work. He's a really big inspiration um, with like his designs and creatures. Um, let's see. is there oh um uh oh luke starkey he's he's another really uh great one um romaine uh palmier i'm not sure if i'm i'm probably butchering that name he's another really really cool artist um let me uh let me see if i can remember his name uh -oh. Yeah, Leon Enriquez is another really, really uh, great creature, like, artist. Check his stuff out. His stuff is really cool, especially if you like kind of, like, alien and, like, Giger kind of work. Um, I would definitely recommend checking his stuff out. I, he's he is probably one of my one of my favorite creature artists uh, that does three D work. His stuff is super super cool, super big inspiration for me. I've been following his work for a really long time, um, but he does a lot of like really cool kind of creepy, grotesque kind of kind of characters. Um, so yeah, definitely check his stuff out. Really really cool. I'd love to be able to sculpt as well as him one day. Um, Let's see. Uh, Geo's work is so inspiring. Yeah, definitely. Uh, please help me with ZBrush. Please, your help. Uh, I'm Mohammed. I'm sorry. I don't. I don't know, or I'm not sure. How can I? How can I help? What is? What are you having trouble with in ZBrush? Um, what is the game slash movie franchise you dream to work on? That's interesting. In and a hard one to answer. Um, and I think because once you get into games, um, I don't know if there's as much like a project that you really want to work on as much as it is like people that you would like to work with. Like there's a lot of artists that I would, I would love to work with. Um, you know, like a lot of the artists that I've mentioned, I would love to have the opportunity to like, work with them at some point in my career. 
um, just because like they make things or concepts or characters that I feel like are really, really cool. And so like to, to kind of make something in that same sort of vein. Um, and I think because once you, once you get into games like the, you kind of like see how the sausage is made. So it kind of like skews your perception of the, the game or the movie to some extent, because you're associating like a lot of the, the, I don't want to say trauma because that's not what it is, but like the experiences and the effort that went into it. So it's like you're kind of either you're biased um, one direction or another. So like I think that there's certain games where it's like I kind of don't want to see how the sausage is made a little bit, you know. Um, but if I was to pick one, I mean, I love Jurassic Park. I would love to make dinosaurs for that movie but the problem is is you know that franchise has kind of gone downhill since the original in my opinion um or at least lost world i think after lost world it kind of went really downhill and i will defend it i think lost world is not a bad movie um but i think that you know that's one of the franchises that i would have loved to because that's kind of what got me into uh 3d to begin with um and maybe like an alien movie that would be cool um i love alien but again this is also like very hypothetical because i i don't really have much of a desire to work in vfx i used to want to but i don't really anymore just because it's a it's it's got its problems you know um and so yeah i i'm not really much into the idea of games Please, hello, guys, link me. Um, so if you're trying to post a link, you can't post links uh, in the chat. Um, oh, the next Elder Scrolls 6. Yeah, I think uh, like that. that's one of those franchises where I think it would be cool because you'd get to do like a lot of like fantasy stuff like that. Um, one game that came out recently, well, there's two games that came out recently that if I had the opportunity to work on them, I would have loved it because they are two of my favorite games and uh that's dead space and uh resident evil 4 if i had gotten the chance to work on those that would have been really cool because i i think that those would have been two like really cool titles to to work on because i know what i'm getting into um i know what i'm going to be making you know so it's like I, you know, I know how the end product will most likely be received, which I think is, is always the hard part when you're like making video games and stuff like that is at the end of the day, you don't know if people are going to like what you're making. Um, people may love it. People may hate it. Uh, for me, I think that that is, it's part of the interesting thing about making games is you don't know what that end reaction is going to be. And like, you kind of always hope it's going to be good. You know, there's, there's always like a lot of people that, that are like, Oh, they talk about game developers and like they suck. And you know, we don't, we don't, we like withhold things for money and stuff like that. And in a lot of those cases, that's not like our decision. Um, we all just want to make like the best game that we can. You know, I saw that there was a lot of like discourse around, um, uh, Baldur's Gate and like people were like oh this has game developers like shake it in their boots because they're gonna have to like up their quality and it's like that's not really uh the the case you know what I mean um that's not kind of like how it works everyone that works in games we all want to make the best thing that we can sometimes things work against you you know sometimes the idea just isn't as cool as you think it is um, sometimes people just don't really, sometimes it's just not the right place at the right time. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that can ultimately happen, but I don't even know how I got on this tangent, but here we are. I'm sorry. Thank you guys for listening, but we'll move on to something else, I guess. Let's see, uh, 
Do you want to join me on Discord? Uh, sorry, Muhammad. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna join on Discord. Um, I unfortunately can't just leave the the channel to join people on on there. I do apologize. If you do have a question, feel free to ask it in here, but um, I unfortunately won't be able to leave. Uh, would you say that it's all right to have various styles of characters in your portfolio as an inspiring, versatile character artist, such as realistic, stylized sci-fi, fantasy, creature, etc., or would that be too unfocused? Um, so it depends. And, and the reason I say that is I think a lot of it depends like where you're at personally in your career. So if you're trying to break in, I would definitely recommend um, less is more. So really focusing specifically on, um, uh, let's see. So I would definitely, sorry, I would definitely focus on doing one specific style um, because when an employer is looking to hire someone, they're looking to hire someone that can fill a role. So for example, if I was at Blizzard, for example, and I was looking to hire for Overwatch 3, I would look for someone who can make stylized characters um, in more of a hand-painted sort of style and can kind of be slotted directly into our pipeline you know whereas like if i got a portfolio that i got two portfolios i got someone who could who was just strictly making stylized characters that looked like what we needed or i got someone who's making realistic fantasy stylized x y and z um this person where that makes all of those styles maybe they're you know, a master or, or very good at majority of those styles, but this person that does the one style is exactly what we need and fits into what we need. Um, I would probably take the guy who does just that style because of the fact that, you know, I know that they're going to kind of slot in a little bit easier. Um, so that's kind of the mentality in it. So usually what I recommend is when you're trying to build your portfolio, I would recommend tailoring it to the studios that you like um, because then you're kind of showing them, uh, yes, basically imitate the studio's art style. That's exactly what I would more or less do is I would I would try and do something that can show them like, Hey, I can fit right in. And it doesn't have to be like, oh, I want to I want to work on um God of War, so I'm going to like recreate Kratos and every single character that's in the God of War franchise, but if you could like show like, oh, I can make a realistic style, um I can have realistic shaders, I can maybe it's like a sci-fi character. You could probably do that. Um you could probably be okay with that um you would probably help your chances even more if it was like a realistic character that was kind of like a nordic character you know if they were hiring for ragnarok that would obviously be a good thing to have in your portfolio but you ultimately don't know what each studio is hiring for so that's kind of like i i wouldn't say try and like narrow it down like that but for example naughty dog I, i'm pretty sure that they're hiring right now for a senior character artist in my mind, I would think, okay, they are most likely making another Last of Us or Uncharted style game. So it's probably going to be pretty realistic. So I would want my um, portfolio to reflect that. I would want to have like really realistic characters in there that, you know, are showing lots of high quality detail, um, super high resolution, you know, things like that. Whereas, like I said, if I was uh, trying to apply for Overwatch, I would want a portfolio that's kind of more oriented towards them with like stylization of characters and hand-painted textures and things like that. Let's see. Um, 
is the algorithmic version of Substance Painter good enough to use for your class? Uh, that's a good question. It, I mean, you could. You'll, you'll still be able to do the same thing. You probably just will be missing some of the... Um, you'll be missing the updated UI, but I don't really do anything in the course that I don't think you can do in older versions of Substance. Um, you should probably be fine. Um, I, I definitely think you, if worst case scenario, uh, you might run into issues with, mm, actually, I don't think you should. Because I provide all of the models and stuff like that. Um, so I don't think you should have an issue. Uh, but I mean, if possible, I definitely would recommend um, doing the latest version. You know, whether it be for like a two-month subscription, um, which isn't, isn't terrible. Obviously, I know that, you know, it still is asking money. But there might be like a tutorial version that you could use in uh, on on substance too so um i'm not sure i think you should be fine but i i i haven't had anyone use the old version uh the algorithmic version and i think it also kind of just depends like what version are we talking like when it first came out um or are we talking like before right before they got picked up by adobe so um but yeah i would definitely recommend uh the latest version would would be best, but I, I definitely don't think you would learn stuff from the class on an older version. So uh, I've worked as a freelancer for five years, but I really like rigging. You recommend some software in demand or remote school that could help me with that. Uh, I know the basic concepts of rigging in Blender and Cinema 4D and Maya. Uh, unfortunately, I can't. I don't really know much about rigging um, outside of like the basics. I don't know... I, shoot, I don't know where people go to learn rigging. I don't. I, it's like a black magic to me. So unfortunately, I don't really have a good, um, a good answer to that. So, um, thank you so much for your answer. Yeah, of course. Happy to help. Uh, hey Jared, love your work, man. Do you uh, do you do portfolio reviews at any point? I do. Um, I do portfolio reviews over on my uh, my YouTube channel. Um, so yeah, that's where I do them. I try to do them like once a month, and I haven't done one for this month yet. I probably need to figure out what I'm going to do that. Um, because I, yeah, I usually try and do them once a month. I'll do them on my personal channel. I announce them on my Instagram. So if you guys don't follow me on Instagram, make sure to follow over there. And that's where I like announce that stuff. And usually what I do is uh, in my stories, I will announce, hey, I'm doing a portfolio review. And then I'll just put like the Q&A link thing, drop your link in there. And then I'll go through, I'll look through them and see who's I want to review. And I, the, the way I choose is usually based on like, where they're at you know like if someone is sending me a portfolio and they like have worked at a, a triple a studio i don't really feel like i can maybe apply as much like applicable help to that situation because it's like they already have that first like initial jump into triple a which i think is the hardest part to to do um but i i kind of search through and try and find uh portfolios that i feel like um, I have something that I can offer and then I hop onto YouTube and do a live stream and then, um, yeah, that's kind of how it works. So if you're not following me over there, that's definitely what I would recommend doing is just make sure to follow me on there and, uh, keep an eye out for that. Um, I do have to do one this month, um, and I'm still not sure when I'm going to do it. So um when is your class releasing uh my class is releasing it's already released actually um so if you go to cgma uh let me see i think i can put the link in the chat and yeah this is the course that i teach it's texturing for games 
Uh, and here is, there is the link to um, the course that I teach. So uh, check that out if you're interested. It's texturing for games, it's six weeks long. Um, so yes, uh, let's see. I have the very last version before Adobe bought them. Yeah, you should be fine with that then. I think you should be okay. Um, for Before my class, it was taught in that version of, of Substance. Um, and there, there are things that are different that like, you know, um, the, you know, um, but for the most part, I think you'll be fine. You should, you shouldn't have an issue. Um, let's see. Uh, Hey Jared, the creature you made for back for blood are, are insane. I know it might sound a bit selfish, but please, I would like to see you doing the same type of creatures in a live stream. Um, so I, I could, I might do something like that. Um, I would have to find a concept that I like is really the biggest thing. I usually don't find a lot of like creature concepts that I really like. There's like a couple of, um, last of us fan art or last of us like concepts where I'm like, Oh, I should do something like that. So I might, I, at some point I will. Um, but right now we're working on the dog. I, I probably will not work on the dog too much longer. Cause I feel like I've worked on this for, more streams than I probably should. So, so maybe in the next couple of streams, I'll try and find something else to start sculpting on. You know, um, we, uh, can do like, maybe I'll find something a little bit more interesting, uh, next stream or, uh, here in the, the future. So I will keep that in mind. Um, let's see. Absolutely agree. The work he and Jay did on the game were top shit. Well, I appreciate that, guys. Thank you. That is very kind. Uh, oh, but uh, do you also have a personal course that you're working on? I believe you mentioned that that on your YouTube channel. Or was that the CGMA course? That was the CGMA course. Um, I am not working on a personal course, uh, because I'm kind of like burned out on working on courses uh for the year i definitely would like to um i think that there's just like a lot of logistics about um like getting that course together um it definitely wouldn't be a i, I don't know i definitely need to like sit down and kind of like formulate a plan for it because i don't feel like i really have one right now um but yeah hopefully in the future the future i want to Definitely make my own course, but uh, I am not working on that um, and won't be working on that probably this year. And also, I would like to do mentorships, but again, that is not something that I am at this juncture able to do. So, um, unfortunately, I don't have a plan for those yet. Got, got to figure those out. So. Okay, so let's save this real quick. Let's see where we're at. As honestly, I feel like this guy is unfortunately going backwards. Mm, yeah, there are definitely things about this that I feel like are going backwards which is not a good place to be at. I don't like to be at that place, but sometimes that happens. So when that happens, you just got to keep chugging through it, I guess. But that's part of why I did uh, this sculpt on stream is because I struggle when I make characters just like everyone else does. And unfortunately, it's pretty frequent that that happens. I feel like majority of the characters that I make, I actually end up struggling making. Um, but, you know, that's just... That's just how I function, I guess. Yeah, that's a that's like a common thing with me is I feel like majority of the characters I make, I just I kind of struggle and fight with. Um, and this, this was a good opportunity to just kind of like practice 
anatomy more so than anything. I haven't done a done a dog in a really long time, and you know, there's certain things that definitely seeing that I probably need to improve on. And dogs, and I feel like that's the hard thing about animals is it's always hard to find like good reference because it's like you don't see dogs that are like that don't have hair on them, you know. So um, this is like one of those those cases. Uh, and yeah, I, 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 uh, wish that there was better reference for him, but it's fine. Uh, sorry, got locked in there for a second. Um, how long did it take you to complete a character in Back for Blood? Uh, definitely depended. Um, it usually ranged depending on what it was, like humans. In most cases, humans usually take like, I don't know, like two and a half to like three months usually. Um, but the creatures usually varied. I would say you're usually looking at like three to maybe even four, depending on on what it was and how complex it was. And like, it can just kind of range. Um, but I usually would say that that's kind of like a good estimate for most game characters is anywhere from like two months to about four months, depending on the importance of the character and um, just like those different aspects, you know. Yeah, I definitely feel like this stream has, it's been a good stream, but not for this character, not for this dog. It's not looking great. Not super happy with it. But sometimes you just have to keep going. But I kind of feel like we're getting diminishing returns at this point, and that is unfortunate. Um, let's see. Uh, thank you for introducing me to the clay spins brush last stream. I've started to like it a lot better than the clay buildup brush. Yes, clay clay uh, spins is the the best brush. It is the brush that I like to use for my forms. Um, that and like my modified clay tubes brush, but uh, I definitely like what it is all about. Gives you some really nice kind of fall off to your strokes, which is nice. So, um, let's see, uh, what would you say is the key ingredient uh, to making a sculpt that doesn't look goopy, thick, and nice and clean? Um, your primary and secondary forms. Um, if you have good primary and secondary forms, you can, uh, that will, and, and that's why, like I had mentioned earlier about Geo's work, that's why Geo's work is so incredibly successful is because his, 
understanding of like forms and making clean and readable forms is probably one of the best in in the industry um without that structure you have something that feels globby and blobby so what that means is like i can actually show you an example so uh let's see so like right here you can tell this is still very very much primary forms right um but as i like move through the process of making it i'll just show like these uh off screen real quick um okay so we did two this is the second step so i've been saving this off into like each time i sculpt it as like kind of a process sort of thing um that was three i think right yeah four five six okay so uh let's see this one okay so this was like my first initial block out there's primary forms in there i'm still kind of following those forms getting that structure in there um and then from there i went to this one which is still continuing to refine that like primary forms the second one is getting in some more of the primary forms kind of refining some of the other shapes so like you can see there's a lot of these shapes are getting refined and same thing from here continuing to just refine the form here i'm getting in some more of those primary forms that are breaking up the silhouette then from here i'm starting to solve some of those like primary forms and starting to introduce some of the secondary forms and now at this point i'm introducing more of the secondary forms so i've cleaned up a lot of like the primary forms and things like that um but i have to start integrating adding secondary forms and that's where like the model is starting to come alive so from here to here there's a lot more personality in it and it's that that secondary forms and things like that so um so let's go ahead and save this guy and we're probably going to wrap things up here in just a second um let's see uh having an intern yeah so i'm just going to read through the last questions and then we'll probably call it a day um having an internship in a small studio will really help in the future if i want to join um triple a studios um i mean maybe i mean it'll it'll give you experience and i de it depends like i did i did internships when i was in college and they weren't with they were with like indie developers and they i wouldn't even consider them that they were more like excuse me like a group of like people that were like hey we're gonna make this thing this game and like none of them ever actually turned into anything but it was an opportunity for me to like just continue to work in a team so yes they are useful um but they aren't like 100 percent necessary your portfolio is the most important thing to getting a job in AAA. Um, any experience that you can get is good, so I would recommend it. I mean, if you have the offer for an internship in a small studio, take it, but I, I wouldn't say that that like, would make or break your ability to get into a studio. Um, so it's good to have, it's good good experience, um, it's a useful experience, it's applicable experience. Um, so, I mean, I would recommend taking it if you have one, but um, you can you can get in without having an internship as well. It's just you just have to have the skill to. Um, let's see. What's the clay spin brush? Uh, the clay spin brush is this bad boy. Um, it's just a type of brush that like spins the alpha while you sculpt. Um, you can find it in the light box brushes, and that's uh, it, it's like my favorite brush. I use it all the time. So um let's see it must be really difficult to switch focuses between chat and sculpting it, it is um and that's why i like i'm trying to get better at it uh it's definitely a lot easier for me to like make better informed decisions on sculpting when i'm just like sitting doing it by myself so like that's the nice thing about this piece is it's like it's not like a high impact sort of piece like if it sucks it sucks it's just kind of a learning 
uh, learning project, you know? Um, but yeah, it definitely takes some like practice for me to sculpt and talk. And that's why I wanted to do it though, is cause I, I trying to get better at it, you know? Um, Gio is on the stylist league today. Actually, I hope you jump on too. Yeah. I've seen that he's been on there. Um, he, you know, he, like I said, if you've never seen Gio's work, definitely check him out. He does some of the best work out there. Um, let's see. Uh, are there any parts of the character workflow you don't enjoy? I find myself having a great time getting through the sculpt and texturing, but things like UVs and retopo, I lose all of my momentum. Um, so I do, I enjoy the entire process. Um, for specific things. I, I obviously love sculpting. The more I can sculpt, the better. Sculpting is, is my favorite part of making characters. Um, but I take retopology as like a nice opportunity to kind of like decompress from like doing the sculpting part, you know? And it's an opportunity for me to just like kind of turn my brain off, throw a show on, and just kind of like turn through topology same thing with uvs uvs don't bother me i can do uvs really fast uh from for most characters i feel like once you know how to do the uvs it's it's not really hard to kind of sit down knock them out um but i would say hair and the reason for hair is because i don't feel like i'm very good at it for one and two uh i feel like it's it is more tedious than doing um topology uh and it, it was i feel like gs curve tools kind of helped that so it made it a little bit more like easy to digest and um focus on so it, i definitely would say it's hair but you know it's not like the end all be all kind of thing but overall i like majority of the process and i've grown to like the parts that i didn't like i didn't like topology and uvs when i wasn't very good at them but now that i'm i'm comfortable with them they don't really bother me same thing with hair i'm sure at some point if i just continue to do it long enough it won't bother me and i'll and i'll like aspects about it but i definitely would say hair so um, but with that said, I'm going to go ahead and call the stream here today, guys. Thank you guys for all coming and hanging out. Um, thanks for all the good chats and stuff and, and questions and things like that. Definitely makes the, the streaming go a lot faster and um, easier. So thanks for everyone for stopping by and listening to me ramble for the last, I don't know, hour and a half. Um, hopefully it wasn't, wasn't too... Uh, too much but again thanks for the support if you guys are interested you guys can check me out on um, youtube as well i also stream over there on my personal channel i have a video that i plan on releasing next week um so keep an eye out for that and if you want to follow me on like instagram or anything like that that's usually where i post any type of information regarding streaming or things like that so definitely come over check it out come hang out um you can find some of my new work that I'm working on there as well. And yeah, thanks for stopping by. 